Hey guys, I wanted to share a video about how to use wires and chains in Fluent Power Trip. So let's just hop right into it. So when you click on the F key, you'll notice you have wire options if you have Fluent Power Trip. So we'll go ahead and place a wire. And just to prove concept, make one click to start the wire, make another click to finish the wire. And then Fluent tries to figure out the distance between the two points. Look at that, you have a nice wire. So there's a modal operation that's active right now. So if you click and hold the left mouse button, you'll have a whole bunch of options. And we want to change this to chain. And notice how the chain does not deform at all. And I'll explain what's going on there in a second, but look how pretty that is. Rudy's done a lot of the hard work for you to make a chain. And it's a whole bunch of operations that are just bundled together, but we'll, We'll go ahead and finish this chain operation. So left click, and then we don't need any more of these operations. You can adjust things in the chain, like its scale. If you want to make a bigger or smaller chain. I'm pretty happy with that chain though. It, it looks pretty decent right off the bat. So let's go ahead and uh, just right click. And you'd think that, you know, I have a small outline color around this, this chain here. And it's like a light blue color. Well, on my theme, when I select something, it's it's actually green. So this this is like a warning sign that hey, uh, this is not the actual chain that's selected. This is something else. And what Rudy's done is he's made a bunch. If you click on your object properties, and we have these you know wire objects here, and the support chain. If you go to the instancing section on the support chain when it's selected, notice selected but you still see that outline what you're really selecting is a bunch of planes and notice how my selection colors change to an outline green just like my other objects so you're really only looking at these planes here and notice I've got my um, face orientations on just to show that one of the operations that Rudy's done is he's added an object offset on the array and he's added an empty and he basically rotated the empty 90 to get this effect um, as it's arrayed along a fit type for a curve and then the wire that you drew is the deformation curve and if you look at these planes these planes deform like crazy and if you had your chain doing that it would look just terrible so what they do is they have parenting you can parent uh, this this plane to a child and so what Rudy's done is he's made a little link and then added the parent as the plane and on the instancing section for the plane you can show on every face that a plane has which is just one face obviously you can instance the child and you could do this for vertices and you'd see a whole bunch right that looks ugly though for this for this sort of scenario and you don't necessarily want to see all these planes so we'll turn the viewport off and now you've got what you originally had when Rudy on the fluent menu helped make this chain with what if you wanted to add a material to this so I'm gonna turn this viewport back on just to show you what's going on and I'm in the uh, viewport shading mode so I can go ahead and click on new material and we'll just call this you know chain material and if it's metal we're gonna give it some kind of gray maybe a little bit of blue and then um, just give it some metallic. And notice how I'm actually just changing the planes color. And the flip normals obviously don't show it because I have the face orientation turned on. Right, but your chain isn't changing color at all. Well, it's because you've only selected the plane. So you can open this up and the actual chain mesh is hidden. You can click on it and look, you don't have any material applied to that. So we can go ahead and add our chain material and notice now we come back to our plane, turn the instancing off, and you got a nice beautiful chain there. And I like to I like to give them both material because I don't have to select between the two. And then I can just adjust my material as necessary. Maybe give it a little less saturation. Right? And then 
it's good to use Rudy's tools to do things, but I've all, I've also just manually made a curve for this. I made Dark Side from the Twisted Metal series, and uh, you can do I let Rudy do a lot of the hard work for you on creating these things, and then you can just parent stuff to your own curves. So with this, I can instead of fitting to the fluent wire, I can fit to my own wire here. Um, and I need to I think I need to reset my my position on my object. Hold on one second. Okay, I'm back. I, I had to just tell myself how I was going to go through this so I can explain it. Um, so notice how I I chose my different curve here, and. Uh, so I've set my curve to be this curve instead, and notice how it's not necessarily following it very well. What you can do, you have to do it to both the array on the fit curve, so that fits the length. So this is the actual length of my other curve. You also have to go to the curve on your modifier and make it deform to that curve, and then it's going to look just crazy. You're like, what the heck did I just do? Well, you have to you have to make this object, the, the plain object, and the empty that... Rudy made, so I have this chain empty three here that it created. I have to take both of these objects and I need to move them to the lo location of my other curve. So if I click on my curve first, Shift S, cursor to selected, click on my other two objects, Shift S, and then to the cursor, I've now got the benefit of having Rudy's hard work along my curve that I decided to build. And I can just turn off the instancing. Right? And look how cool that is. So making a chain, figuring out how to give it material, um, you know, adopting a different curve if you want, and still keeping Rudy's hard work for you. All this stuff is uh, pretty powerful, but it's also nice to know how to influence your own tools. Hopefully this video helps out, though, and... Uh, We'll catch you on the next one.